Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 8, which is the Hyosi compound. And we're going to focus on the last subtopic of chapter 8, which is the 8.5 phenol. So in this video, we're going to look into the acidity of phenol and we're going to compare that with the acidity of alcohol as well as water. Also, we're going to look into the chemical properties of phenol, where phenol is going to be written as a benzene ring where it is attached directly with the hydroxyl group. So the whole structure here is known as phenol. So the phenol can be reacted with sodium metal, Na, can also be reacted with the sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and phenol can also be identified using FeCl3 solution as well as using the bromine water. So we're going to look into this reaction in the latter slide. So without any further ado, let us start. So for acidity, basically means that it is an ability of a compound to release a proton. So let's say if you have an acid and when it, when it is dissolved in water, the proton of the acid is going to be transferred into the H2O in order to produce an hydronium ion as well as produce, producing A- here which refers to the conjugate base. Okay, so from an acid, when it is donating a proton to the water, it's going to uh, forming a new compound, a new species which is a conjugate base. So, the stability of a conjugate base will determine the acidity. So, the higher the stability of the conjugate base, gonna be um, acidic is the species. Okay, so when the conjugate base is more stable, it is more it is more likely for a transfer of the hydrogen gonna happening, and this is gonna shift the equilibrium to the right, and this is gonna favor the formation of the conjugate base. Okay, pasal conjugate base ni sangat sangat stabil, hydrogen can be transferred into water and this is a favorable process. So now we're going to look and talk about the conjugate base. Okay, and we're going to focus on the phenol first because phenol when dissociated in water, it's going to be uh, producing a phenoxide ion as well as the hydrogen ion. Okay, so the phenoxide ion are essentially a very, very stable compound because they're going to be a delocalization of the negative electron and the, the negative charge where the lone pair can be transferred uh, inside the benzene ring and this uh, causes the phenoxide ion to be very stable and this effect is known as the resonant effect. So now, we're going to do the resonance stability of the phenoxide ion where we can move the negative charge, which consists of two electrons, and we can bring it to form a double bond here. Okay, and as a result of the negative charge transferred into here, this is going to form a double bond, and this double bond is going to be transferred to this end. Okay, and as a result, you can say that the double bond is going to be forming here, and the double bond, which carry two it which carry two electrons going to be transferred to this end, which carry a negative charge. Okay, at the same time, the negative charge here can also be transferred into this carbon-carbon cycle bond, and the carbon-carbon double bond going to be moving forward to this corner here, and this corner here going to carry a negative charge. Okay, and the process uh, continuously happen where the negative charge going to be inserted here, and the carbon-carbon double bond is going to break and forming a negative charge on this corner. Okay, and this is known as the resonance stability of the phenoxide uh, ion, where it, is, it will be continuously uh, be a delocalization of electron in the phenoxide ion. And this is uh, enclosed with a bracket to show that it is a very, very stable, and the phenoxide ion can delocalize completely around the negative charge of the oxygen as well as the in the benzene ring. Okay, and now we're going to compare the acidity of phenol, alcohol, and water. So as mentioned, um, the acidity will be depending on the conjugate base. And as what you have shown, the phenol going to be a very, very stable, well, we're going to have a very, very stable conjugate base. So it's going to be the most acidic. Okay, so phenoxide, when it is dissociated, you're going to form phenoxide ion and hydrogen ion. For the ethanol here, it's going to be producing an ethoxide ion as well as water. 
and for the water, uh, for, sorry, for with the hydrogen ion, and for the water, it's going to produce a hydroxide ion as well as the hydrogen ion. Okay, and we, if we were to compare the stability of the conjugate base, the, phenol, the phenoxide ion is going to be the most stable, followed by the hydroxide, and next one, the last one is going to be an ethoxide. Okay, and the phenol here is the most acidic. Okay, okay, this is because of the stability of the conjugate base. Okay, and as you know that the conjugate base is the one that is, uh, that uh, it is the species after the species has donated the hydrogen. Okay, so it is the one with the negative charge. So the phenoxide ion here is the most stable uh, conjugate base because the electro the negative charge can be delocalized around the benzene ring. Okay, and for this one, the ethoxide ion, it's going to be the least stable. Okay. Here is the most stable because of the resonance. Okay, phenol resonance as what you have seen in the previous slide. But for this one, ethoxide is going to be the least stable because the CH3CH2 here act as an electro-donating group. Okay, means that it's going to transfer more electron towards the oxygen. So, when you have an electron-donating group, for example, an R, oxygen here already have a negative charge and when you have electron donating group it will keep on transferring electron to the oxygen so the oxygen become more negative more negative and more negative hence it is very unstable so that is why when it is the most unstable conjugate base it's going to be the least acidic so ethanol here going to be the least acidic and the water here is just acting as our reference yang di tengah-tengah sebagai kita punya uh, control. Okay? So, the explanation here is something that I have talked just now where the presence of the alkyl group in the ethoxide ion here will increase the density, the electron density of the negative charge on the oxygen atom and hence make the ethoxide ion to be less stable and the phenol going to be the most acidic because of the stabilization uh, or because of the resonance stabilization where the electrons can be delocalized around the benzene ring. Okay? Now we're going to look into the reaction of phenol. Just now we are talking about the acidity. But now we're going to focus on the reaction of phenol. So phenol, as you know, is a very... Uh, is, uh, is an acidic... is the most acidic in compared to water and also ethanol. Okay? So, uh, the acidic phenol can undergo reaction with sodium metal which act as the alkali metal and this is going to produce a phenoxide ion and the sodium is going to be attaching closely to the phenoxide ion and this is going to be forming as a sodium phenoxide and the byproduct here is going to be the hydrogen gas and this happens with the ether as the solvent. Okay. At the same time, the phenol, the phenol can undergo reaction with the sodium hydroxide at room temperature in order to produce the sodium phenoxide and water. So the same reaction, which is phenol, and then you have a sodium hydroxide. The H here going to be changed with an A+, and O here going to be O-. minus. Okay, So phenol going to be a sodium phenoxide, and the byproduct here going to be water. Okay, so just now, when we are using Na, it's going to be H+, but, but when we are using NaOH, it's going to be water. Okay, and now, the reaction of phenol with NaOH aqueous can be used in order to distinguish phenol from other type of the alcohol. So, let's say if we have a phenol and we undergo the reaction with sodium hydroxide as in this previous slide, you know that the phenol is going to be forming a phenoxide ion. And because we are using a metal of sodium, so it's going to be a sodium phenoxide. 
Okay? But now, let's say if we have a cyclohexanol, and then we're going to react that with sodium hydroxide, we're going to see that there's going to be no reaction that is happening. Okay? Why is that? Because cyclohexanol, which is an example of the alcohol, example of alcohol, so alcohol is least acidic. Okay? In comparison to water, and phenol is the most acidic. So the most acidic substance can react with a base in order to form a product of sodium phenoxide. However, a very less acidic uh, compound, for example, alcohol, will not undergo any reaction okay, with the sodium hydroxide. However, as what you have learned in the previous subtopic, the alcohol can react with sodium metal. Okay, they can react with the sodium metal. However, they cannot react with sodium hydroxide. Okay, and because of the phenol can react with the sodium hydroxide, but alcohol cannot. So this can be a identification test. Okay, so it, let's say you have phenol in one bottle and alcohol in another bottle and you want to know which is phenol and which is alcohol, you can undergo reaction with sodium hydroxide. So the one that it that gives the product is going to be the phenol. Okay, now we're going to look into the identification test for phenol. So phenol can be identified using a bromine water. So the reagent that we need is the bromine with water as the solvent and this can happen at room temperature. So phenol can be reacted with the bromine molecule in water as a solvent and this is going to produce phenol and they're going to be 2, 4, 6 tribromophenol. Okay, where the bromine molecule here is going to be separated and this is going to attach at the carbon number 2, carbon number 4 and carbon number 6. Okay, and as the result of this reaction, the bromine which is reddish brown in color is going to be decolorized and at the end of the reaction, the white precipitate is going to be formed that shows that the formation of the 2,4-tribromophenol. Okay, so when the phenol uh, can be changed into a white precipitate by using this reaction, we know that phenol is present in the reaction. Okay, at the same time, we can identify phenol by using the barium trichloride solution and this also happened at the room temperature. So let's say if you have a phenol, and then you're going to react that with the barium trichloride. So what you're going to get at the end is that you're going to get the purple complex. So the ferrum trichloride here is initially yellow solution. However, when it reacts with the phenol, the FeCl3 is going to be attached at the pi electrons of the phenol and this is going to produce a purple complex. Okay, so the ferrum trichloride here gonna, will not be attached with the carbon but it attaching to the middle of the uh, phenol ring here, okay? So it is much more complicated um, idea for the attachment, but at least for this level, it is sufficient for you to know that FeCl3 is going to be attached at the pi electron in the middle, okay? And as for the observation, we can see that the formation of purple complex is uh, shown at the end of the reaction, all right? So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye.